Golden Shores was built on an elevated coastal hazard area. And while they don't have any disaster prevention strategy in place, I'm sure it'll be fine. Tigaroos are part of a complete balanced breakfast for anyone aspiring to one day suffer from fatty liver disease. Sapphire Bay's famous Pier 1 provides visitors with plenty of skee-ball, popcorn shrimp, and elegantly airbrushed t-shirts. and the shark discover the miracle of self-love. This mineral supplement wouldn't be necessary if this shark ate a more nutritious, well-balanced diet. such thing as a recession-proof business, except for the frozen banana stand. Whether boom or bust, the demand for reliable, quality frozen bananas remains a constant. and itinerant hobos will work for a living. They are not to be confused with bums who are sedentary and refuse to work. Supercharged with gene-altering mutagens, the shark now has an asymmetric edge on the competition. Serenity of an otherwise calm sea 
The shark hunter is fighting. demonstrates the importance of getting enough minerals in her diet. Long a haven for small government ideologues, Port Clovis prides itself in its lax amusement park safety standards. A strange conglomeration of stuff will end up in the stomachs of sharks. As is well known, volleyballs make way better friends than soccer balls, who will stab you in the back the first chance they get. Sharks are frequent culprits in boat attacks. Falcon, America's largest shark finning enterprise, Mama Maybell Bryant has collected quite a fleet of recreational boats. Her fail sons, Randall and Tyson, can often be spotted piloting them around Sapphire Bay. Constantly reminded of how man's intrusion has disrupted the fragile equilibrium of the marine world. Parrotfish here. 
Warrior have kept Sapphire Bay's local hammerhead healthy and straight. Dominant species of carnivorous, beach loving partners. The successful shark hunt is traditionally celebrated with off brand cinnamon whiskey and large quantities of pseudo effect. in a skull allow them to locate potential prey. has been placed on the fugitive shark.
latest cycle of attacks will certainly be among the most infamous chapters in the long, troubled history of human shark relations. Well, that's just Port Clovis. I really should get polarized right now. Port Clovis has grown bored somewhere, leaving our sharks to fight another day. Pride in boat ownership manifests itself in a variety of ways here in Port Clovis. The grotto provides a brief respite from the Sturm und Drang of the Gulf. someone had done their sixth grade reading assignment, perhaps this tragedy could have been avoided. The rapacious rover is always swift, searching for anything to satisfy the gluttony that is their despite nature. People paid over $12,000 to sleep in these tents and listen to Swedish DJs for an entire weekend. Sharks are more inclined to attack boats in areas not typically frequented by swimmers or divers. Sailors of yore believed that the mere sighting of a shark portended the death of a crew. It's a shame that a human and shark must so often meet as enemies. What if a bounty for a real live man eater? Fort Clovis picks up arms in the name of a murderous cause. Hey, Marco, you got a boat and a gun? Favorite. 
Like most American cities, the founders of Port Clovis were Freemasons. And probably Illuminati, who congregated in secret UFO bases to perform Luciferian blood rituals. against the shark by sending some of its most disreputable citizens. The shark returns once again to her safe haven.
Soul Shark triumphs, overcoming her opponent's clearly superior depth perception. As twilight falls, Pete is in an uncharacteristically quiet mood. It's a dangerous job. It's not something unknown to me. Well, you want to see dangerous? Look at that, yeah? That's PT-522. My daddy crewed that off of Guadalcanal. It was Navy. Gunner's mate. Pacific Theater. But when I was 16 men, came back a day later with three. Man survives all that. Wants to die here in the Gulf. What happened to him? Boy, you don't like me saying this. But my daddy, his granddaddy, was killed by a mega shark. I, I, I'm sorry. He's talking about a prehistoric fish that went extinct 2.6 million years ago. I seen it. Now, you were a kid. Ain't they discover new animals all the time? Sort of. Well, not, not exactly. In lots of cases, they're just corrections of species with different names. Also stuff like misspelling. But I just say it. Maybe there are things in the water that ain't in your textbook. Stick around. Maybe you learn a thing or two this summer. Whatever. The ocean is vast. The majority of it still remains unmapped and unexplored by mankind. Perhaps Kyle shouldn't be so quick to dismiss his father's fevered ramblings.